Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome for tuning in anyway. Thank you for coming up, like. Um, just a quick one, really, this time and this live. I was struggling what to do. I have ideas during the week, and then by the end of the week, I've forgotten and I'm thinking of something else. So for this one, I thought, basically, I'd go through um, the Skyvac Industrial 85, basically, uh, how to upgrade your motor. Got a problem there with that slide title. Saw that one out later. But um, yeah, I've had to change the motor in my gutter vac, which some of you may know I've done. I've made a video on it. Well, I haven't made it. I'm, I've filmed it. I'm in the process of editing it at the moment. So hopefully some point this week, I'm hoping to put it out anyway. Um, for me, that's a big thing. I managed to change my motor on the gutter vac. It's not something I ever thought I'd be doing. <laughs> It's something I thought I would take to spinner clean and get them to do it, but I um, can't afford to lose a day's work to go up there to see them and then get that fixed. So I thought, right, I'll have to do it myself one evening. So that's what I thought I'd talk about in this live, basically. So um, moving on anyway, if I can get to it. So when you're changing the motor on your gutter vac, you're going to need some tools. So basically, you're going to need a screwdriver, but... You need a set of screwdrivers really. You can need Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. That's the minimum. Um, you probably need different size ones just to make access a bit easier, I suppose. But um, it can be fiddly with all the wires. That's all to try and get stuff. So you'll need like a long screwdriver to reach. So if you've got a pack where you've got a selection, say of four flatheads and four Phillips screwdrivers, for example, you're gonna need that basically. And you're also going to need some masking tape. I didn't have masking tape, so I used electrical tape. So some form of tape where you can label up things and then write on it. So to write on it, you're going to need a permanent marker because obviously the last thing you want is all that to, to come off so you don't know what's going on. Uh, but I used my daughter's Sharpie, so it's a nice thin uh, permanent marker. And I use that to write on the tape so it can help label where things are. So it's easy easy for me how to put stuff back together again and this day and age as well if you've got a mobile phone because you can take uh, pictures with it you can use that each stage to take pictures of things so you've got something to refer back to when you're trying to put it back together how it was and um, so that's a great help as well and then I got in touch with um, Spinner Clean when I brought the motors online and asked have they got any instructions because I did find one video, that's all on YouTube, and it's from, I'd have to give them a shout out, but I can't remember what they're called, but it's um, somewhere in Australia, and so I've kind of followed that, but used the instructions, basically, um, that Spinner Clean gave me. So just email Spinner Clean, and you'll get an email back that day with a link to the, for you to download, or it's in the email, uh, for me to download or save the PDF format, which is what I'll take you through as well. Yeah, sorry, Richard, just seen that um, on the comments. Uh, Richard's just saying, take a photo before basically each stage as well. Um, so, yeah, use your mobile phone for that. That's absolutely great. So what we might as well do is I'll show you the PDF, basically. So this is the PDF that I got when I emailed them, and they've given it back. And he, uh, it also had a, a note on it saying it's the updated version as well. So when I printed it off, it come off A4, and it was in uh, landscape, not portrait, so it's sideways. So this is pretty much it. And this is what you're gonna get. It's just a series of pictures with, as you can see, <laughs> just uh, some small little bits of instructions to guide you through. So that's why I'm glad I found a video and I watched that a few days before and was trying to read these to try and using both to marry up the idea so it's good enough for me to follow basically um it's got in red here saying firstly make sure you turn the en um, engine <laughs> the machine off and make sure it's unplugged from any sockets but that's probably common sense but it has to be on there i suppose um this first stage you don't necessarily have to do but i did it when i was trying to make my version of video of how to do this You've got the blue handle you'll see on the second photo. Um, you've basically got six screws, Phillips screwdriver, undo those, and then you'll be able to lift up the blue handle and completely remove it. And then as you've probably worked out from the lower two photos, underneath the handle, that's where you can undo another two screws. And then basically 
you'll remove the power plug so it's completely disconnected. Uh, I did that, but I think you could leave the whole thing together and then it'll just be easier to remove the top part of the head unit, basically. Uh, as long as it's unplugged, you should be all right. But that is, if you ever have to change the power lead, then you know how to do it, don't you? But uh, yeah, this is the style of instructions you get to follow along. And uh, like most instructions, <laughs> it's a bit of guesswork as well to try and make sense of it. If you was going to take that off or leave it on, so you can skip to this stage, stage sorry, where you've got the very top part of the um, gutter vac itself, six screws for you to undo, and then you can lift it up and then you'll explode, as you can see in the other picture where you've got the blue plastic bit. But what you're going to have to do is all them wires are still connected. You can't actually lift it off. So what you've got to do is, this is the bit where I think a video would have been and, um, handy because it's hard just to go off pitches and the instructions. But I suppose if you're more clued up than what I am, you'll probably work it out anyway. Because what you've got to do is then start disconnecting the wires from the back end of the switches to turn the uh, gutter back on and off. And on each switch is basically four wires. The top two spade ends, you've got a white wire and a like a red orange wire sort of colour. Leave them attached. But the ones you're going to have to take off is below that there's two more spade ends on each switch and they've got um, grey cables going to them and it's the grey cables you want to disconnect it will tell you on here if you read it basically using a flathead screwdriver because you've got these little tabs to press in and when you press in the tab it disengages like a, a little nipple that goes into from the spade end to what it connects onto so it unlocks it so when you press that tab in you can then pull and then the wires will come off. If you just try pulling it, you won't. It's locked on. So that's why you need a flathead screwdriver. Um, just just to take the wires off, basically. And you've got to do that on all the switches uh, to disconnect. Um, so basically, you can take the top layer off. But the bottom right-hand picture, that's trying to get you. There's a couple more wires you have to disengage as well with a spade end. Again, it's not very clear on here, but it's, it's good if you watch it on... On a video like the one I found and hopefully the one I'm gonna make and then basically once you disconnect all the wires you can remove that part and you're left with the blue bit and all the wiring uh, and then basically it tells you how to move the wiring through the blue bit of plastic and then you can take that off but there's also nine screws that go around in the circle Phillips screwdriver undo them take them off uh, and like Richard's saying at each stage take a picture or of anything so you've got a guide to yourself on how to put things back and how things are wired up uh, and then what I've done as well because I followed someone else's tip I also put the tape it was electrical tape for me but it could be masking tape and marked it up with a pen so I knew what motor would go to what switch and you could obviously mark up the switches as well so you know how they all marry up together again basically uh, and then basically it just goes through different stages here, like how to take out the foam um, and then moving the wiring through to go down to the next level. And then they've got nine screws as well and an earth, earth uh, um, wire like goes to where there's a screw. So you remove the earth screw as well and you can take that layer apart and then it exposes the layers underneath so you can get to the motors basically. Uh, so that's that's the PDF. It's, You'd, you'd probably suss it out because you're probably more clued up about it than what I am. I mean, if I can do it at the end of the day, you can. Uh, and hopefully with the video I've made, although at the moment the video is like an hour long and I'm trying to cut it down as well, but I was just talking whilst filming and I was just following these instructions basically. Yeah, um, I wasn't trying to make a really good tutorial because it took me like six hours anyway and six hours a night before. Because for what happened to me is I had to... Um, changed three of my motors in the end what it was was I was on a job and two of me motors on the gutter vac instantly just they just burnt out and I was just down to my last motor and look at it held out and I completed the job on that so I brought two mo motors replaced them then when I put the whole thing together to check everything works started with each motor that I just replaced so them two were working when I turned the the one on that was working to start with that then went on me so then I had to go and buy another one so I spent another evening of taking it all apart and replacing that one motor so managed to do that anyway um, and they all worked so it's all three motors working now it's funny that all the motors went roughly at the same time so whether it's time of life they just 
so many times they work and then they go out. But it could also have been the filters um, that you use. They might have been knackered. So a bit of debris come in and knackered up my motors, which I probably expect is what it was. So it just shows you how important it is to maintain your motor, motors, maintain your filters, and to keep an eye on them and keep buying replacement ones rather than keep pushing it to get the most life out of it as possible. Um, but yeah, these, these basically are the PDF instructions. That's how you get them emailed. You can print them off and hopefully my video if you use both basically it'll, you'll work out how to do it just give yourself plenty of time and a couple of cans of beer and you'll get there no problem so yeah this is a pdf and that's basically putting it all back together at the end so quite straightforward um and like i said if i can do it you can and what it's definitely done is it saved me having to move my window cleaning so i've got a day free to travel down to spinner clean and then pay them to do it it's something i can do because when I looked on their uh, website and I was looking up for the motor, you can see it's 126 pound in, um, and that's including your VAT. So I ended up buying three of them. <laughs> well, I brought two to start with, but when you scroll to the bottom, I'll just try and uh, highlight this bit here for you. And the key benefits, it does say it's easy to fit yourself. So that's what basically made me think, right, I'll have a go. Um, as long as you're competent, that's all it says. So you don't have to be someone who's qualified, just competent so you can put it all back together. At the end of the day, it's the got a vac. I've got an industrial 85. It is an expensive bit of kit. So <laughs> you don't want to knacker it up really. And I need it for my job. I like using it. So you've got to learn to look after it really. And I do look after it. I do wash it. I do clean it. I just think I've got definitely the most of my money out of them filters although they, they looked all right, but I'm only assuming that a bit of debris come in and it's knackered up my uh, motors as all three went in the end, or whether all three are just gone because it's time of life, who knows. Um, so yeah, your filters are really, really important. So I'll try and find the filters for you. Because they are 57 pounds something off the top of my head each. Here we go. So these are the filters, as you can see, it's um, Skyvac 75, 78, 85, and the Interceptor model. So I've got the uh, Industrial 85, I'm sure it'll be the Nitro as well. As you can see with, with VAT, it's £57.60. It does also, when you look on the website, they give you great advice and everything here, like how to look after it, how to clean it, top tips. It says have a spare in the van, so that's why I also ordered two of these along with the third motor I brought and I've always had two. Uh, the reason why you want spare is because if one of them gets really wet it makes the air to draw into the motors harder work and it's, it's going to put pressure on your motors so what you need to do is when they're saturated take it off and put another one on or if it's too clogged up with dirt so that's why you always have a spare um, but they also say when you read it on the website it's, it's basically to be changed every four months now, whether that's four months of constant use, because you tend to do it in seasons, don't you really? Uh, for like the gutter season and a few jobs here and there. So I'm, I'm probably going to say every year, I'm just going to buy new filters. And obviously, if after every use, you're going to clean it anyway. You just basically got to brush all the little pleats where there's mud in there out. And then with a hose pipe, just run your water through there. Don't use anything with too much pressure because you just rip it and then let it dry and then basically it's good to go but then inspect it then for any any damages before you reuse it or any misshapen bits and if they look gone that's when I'd replace it as well but I'm definitely going to do it every year uh, minimum why it says four months I don't know if that's four months of use or not maybe that's something I'm gonna have to get in touch with spin a clean or you yourselves can as well so it is important that you look after and maintain these filters because they're going to do their job of looking after your motors and as you can see the motors are as you've already seen 126 pound each I keep pressing the wrong buttons so a 57 pound filter is going to be cheaper than a 126 pound motor isn't it at the end of the day and especially when you've got three of them you're talking 350 well 375 quid aren't you and then you probably need to buy a filter so yeah i'd rather go looking after me filters anyway they are important so yeah i love the gutter vac i'm quite chuffed 
I stripped it down, took it apart. Don't get me wrong, it is fiddly. You're going to swear a lot. <laughs> Thank God I can edit that out when you're video making. But um, it's doable. If, if I can do it, you can do it. And now I've done it a couple of times, it should be quite straightforward. And also, I could probably service the head myself now because I know how to take it all apart. Um, I had a problem because I did go to spinner clean for to have the head serviced on my gutter vac, and that was really good. Um, and I did have an issue with my um, Power Max le lever. And after stripping it down, I can see what the problem would have been. So that's something I could now resort out myself if I ever come across that problem again. I'll just know instantly how to sort it out. Um, but yeah, no, pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> it's not, I'm glad it got done. Um, and I wanted to get it done because I was using it on a job that was coming up as well. So I rely on that gutter vac. I, I mean, I love it. I'm not afraid to use ladders. Then it takes longer on the job and the gutter vac is just so much easier. Um, they're brilliant things. I'm really glad I got it. It's a good bit of kit. I've got the generator and everything with it. I love it. So yeah, that's why I thought I'd just do a quick live basically today and just, just basically say it's something you can do yourself. You can change the motors yourself. You don't have to take a day off work plus fuel traveling down and then paying labor. It's something you can do in the evening and you haven't lost a day's work. Because of how it's been over winter, it's uh, not been good. And I've lost a lot of work with December and January. It's cleaned out my little buffer. So there's no way I wanted to lose a day's work. So it kind of pushed me into doing it. Whereas if I was a bit a bit more flush, it's probably something I would have took the day off and traveled down there and paid them uh, to change the motors for me. But um, now I know I can do it. If I can do it, you can. And hopefully when I get the video out there, following along the video with these PDF instructions, which you can get hold of straight from Spinner Clean, you'll all be able to do it yourself, no problem. And I expect most gut of the backs are similar. Obviously different models are gonna be different um, because I couldn't see on their website how to change it. That's why I got in touch with them, but there is one on how to change your motor for the Atom, for example. But yeah, no, it's chuffed. Okay, just uh, if you've got any questions, just stick them in the comments and I'll come to them. If you're watching this after the live's finished, stick them in the comments at the bottom and then I'll come back to you as well. I've had quite a few comments on my other videos. I always try and answer them as well. Excuse me. So if you've got any questions about things, just, just put them in there. I'll come back to you. Uh, and obviously people are leaving good bits of advice for me as well, um, especially when it comes to dealing with all the people that keep skipping all the time that sort of thing because at the end of the day everyone's we're all on our own little journeys aren't we but it's very similar uh, but I am a believer you've got to make your own mistakes so you can learn from them <laughs> you're probably going to listen to other people's mistakes but you're going to go ahead and make them anyway <laughs> at least you kind of know the heads up on the answer but yeah we're all, all here to help each other window cleaning and as easy as what people seem to think especially with the cost of live, living and all that lot but there you go Right, if nobody's got any questions or any questions about anything, doesn't have to be doing with the um, gutter vac at all, just stick them on there. So uh, this was Richard's comment earlier, take a photo beforehand too. So yeah, your mobile phones or anything else you've got really, it's definitely handy. You can see how things go together. Sometimes you, you're zooming in on the photo because <laughs> you took a picture of something, but in the background is what you need. So you're zooming in there to make sure uh, so you can see the connections. What I did find is some of the spade ends, I'd push too far on these tabs to unlock them. So what happened is the spade connectors were coming off and I was having to re-undo everything to get to the bottom layer of the gutter vac. And then I learned to bend the tabs a bit more. So the ta um, spade ends would lock in place as they should have done. So they'd stop me having to keep disconnecting all these flipping different layers and parts and screws just keep pushing it back on again because it kept coming off because when you're trying to put it together all the wiring's quite tight so it's, it's tugging on the spade end so make sure they're locked in properly uh, that's my top tip anyway all right i don't think there's going to be any more comments on here so i'll probably like i said it's just going to be a short one i think next week what i might do is um oh hang on all right rob any tips for internal cleaning um yeah just bear with me a second don't think i've got a link on there 
to my window pane. Sorry, I've just got a picture up for you, um, Rob. It's basically, I've tried, how I first cleaned the inside windows was with traditional, but I found it really hard in direct sunlight, especially in the summer, because you can't obviously use too much liquid on the glass, the soapy solution, whatever you're gonna use, fairy liquid or whatever, because the water's gonna make a mess. You could put towels in that stuff. But also found with your bucket on a belt and everything around your, your waist, sometimes when you're trying to get between sofas and things like that, it just gets in the way. And after Christmas, I got fat enough as it is anyway. So then I switched on trying different things. And this is what me and the family thinks best. This is what we use. It's this stuff here. Um, it's called Bright, B-R-I-T-E. It's made by Clover. So it's not particularly really expensive. And what I've got in the picture here is you've got a trigger bottle. So it's a 350 mil trigger bottle. And they also sell it in these five litre containers. So if you're going to get anything for cleaning insides, that's what I recommend. And then I'd also recommend getting that set up. So you've got a 350 litre trigger bottle and then you've got a five litre bottle to refill that one up. And then what you can do after then is just buy the five litre bottles. And you could always probably have a spare trigger bottle because it might go missing. And what I tend to use, I've, I use a different trigger bottle. So it's got no uh, labels on it. It's just completely unmarked. It's one of the round ones. And I fill that with bright so people don't know what product I'm using. It sounds weird, like for a bloke to say. Um, it's got a nice smell to it. And my customers, even the husband, will say that as well. See, you can tell it's been used. It is nice. It's really good stuff. Spray it on. It goes through bird poo, no problem. Uh, all that sort of stuff. So it cuts through that. And then I use two microfiber cloths. Um, let's see if I can find this one for you. With the microfiber cloths, let's do a search for you. Oh, that's not good. Basically, I use something like this. Um, it's not window cleaner. I'll get, I use ones from Unger. I get it from a different shop. It's like from near me. It's not far in Whittlesea. Short travel. Go to Hugh Crane. And basically, that's where I buy the brights from. And I also buy a pack of cloths. So I've got the Unger cloths, the small square ones. I think they're 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. And it's what everyone would probably use as a seal cloth when you're doing traditional work. So you can use it for traditional and then obviously use it as a cloth inside with the bright. So what I do is I spray a lot of the um, bright on the glass and then use the um, seal cloth to try and get that saturated. And then basically as I start using it, I'll use less of the spray because of the, the cloth's quite saturated. As you know, microfiber cloths work best when they're saturated, but then they don't work very well if they're too dry or oversaturated. And I use that to do the initial clean, so that cuts for all the bird poo and marks and all this kind of stuff. And then basically, I use like this. This is um, a microfiber cloth, so it's not your seal cloth. It's what you'd probably use as a detailing cloth. And the ones I buy, that I get them from Hugh Crane. But I believe you can buy the same cloth in something like Wilco, so it's not too expensive neither. And they're brilliant at polishing, so what you'll find is when you first start, you'll just have to use the bright, like I was saying, oversaturate, use the cloth. And as the cloth's getting wetter, you can put less on. But once you've given it a clean, it will leave like, obviously, there's still going to be the glass cleaner on the, on the glass, basically. But it's not going to be too heavy because some of it's off on the cloth. And then when you polish it off with your detailing cloth, that will just dry no problem at all. You can use it in direct sunlight, it won't dry up on you. And when you get the, what you might think is little smears, don't keep going over it and over it, just leave it, they will start to disappear. So they're good for, if you're washing your car and the sun's out, they're great for cleaning the window screen as well. It's awesome stuff. So that's what I'd recommend is bright because you just need the trigger bottle in your hand and then you can have hanging out your pockets or on your belt or whatever you want to use is just two cloths, a seal cloth and a detail cloth. And the beauty of that is this stuff bright. You can use it um, on the UPVC frames as well, wooden frames. So you can get all the frames done, the seals done and the glass done, just like you do on the outside. I don't know if it can zoom in for you more. <laughs> I can't move the label up. Hang on. Give us a sec. 
So it's streak free, smear free. So it is definitely really good. Trust me, I'll use it. It's great. And it does what it says. Um, so it's not like window lean and stuff where you still get smears. This this is really good. But you'll also see you can use it. Um, it says here like cleans windows, double glazing, mirrors, glass, display, glass shelves, screen, ceramic tiles, laminate, stainless steel, plastic, aluminium and all hard surfaces. So it's great on your fridges and things like that. We use it a lot just in our house so it's really really great um it's saying here look cleans white goods fridges dishwashers washing machines kettles toasters etc glass cleaning new pvc uh, glazing and double glazing industry photocopiers to see, get a clear image honestly this is really great uh stuff just zoom out of that for you so just look it up um see where you can get it from uh luckily for me i can drive somewhere to get hold of it so i'm not paying all the delivery fees and all that kind of stuff i don't do tons of inside work so it does last me a while there's one job i do on a saturday once a month where we clean the inside of six conservatories the outsides that's the roof and the windows as um because it's their display area so we use it in there uh, and it's great especially when it comes to summer and you've got all these um the flies get in there and that honestly this stuff goes through fly poo no problems and it's great in direct sunlight it, it's it's what i use uh rob so hopefully mate um that's kind of answered your question or given you food for four anyway uh if you don't want to use this stuff obviously you can use um, traditional equipment um but i'm nowhere near as good as what the guys who do trad for living and because you can't use too much water i find it hard in the summer Whereas this bright's brilliant, just spray it on. You can do all the frames and everything as well as the glass. It, it's honestly, it's great. Hi, Chad. Thanks, mate, as ever. <laughs> yeah, the Wilco glass cloths are great. Uh, really? It's just I was in Kings Lynn last Saturday. Went down there um, with my kids and the missus. And then I saw Wilco's there was shut. I just thought it was that shop. I didn't know the whole of Wilco's collapsed. Wasn't aware of that. But yeah, if you can get them cloths, they're great for detail like detail like cloths. I swear it's the same cloth I buy, but it's, it's Ukraine. It looks very similar anyway. And um, even my dad used it and he says, what a beautiful cloth that is. And the price was good. Let's see if we can get a bigger picture. Don't know what size this is. Uh, 40 by 40 and get 80 by 60. It looks very similar to this, the one that I use anyway. Uh, it's great as a polishing cloth for cleaning the insides or it's what I use for detailing when I do the odd bit of trad as well. Um, but yeah, and a seal cloth. That's it. That's all you need for the insides, really. Well, that's what we do. It's surprising how long doing the insides can take you. Uh, that's why we find this stuff's brilliant. And we can break down in teams. Because when I do that big job that I do on a Saturday, once a month, like I said, it's six conservatories. They're display ones. And we clean the roofs in and out, the windows in and out as well as the windows of the actual um, shop themselves. We can divide into teams, so all the outside's getting cleaned while the inside's getting cleaned at the same time. And uh, we do quite well. When I first did that job first time round, took me and my son eight hours. Uh, bear in mind that was the first clean as well. Uh, but now the whole family's in there. Problem is it cost me a lot of money paying everyone off. But it's a good way for us to spend time with each other anyway. Um, we don't mind doing it. Well, we like doing it. <laughs> and uh, they appreciate it. Has anyone else got anything else that they want to ask or get advice, talk about? No probs, Rob. Um, hope it kind of helps. I'm not sure where the best place to buy the Bright from itself, um, but look for the trigger bottle and the five litre containers. It's probably worth just getting it and trying it in your own house and make up your own mind, see what you think of it really. And you've probably got some cloths if you do the odd little bit of traditional work that you can test with anyway but it's tops it's really good stuff and it's, it's like i say it's great on other other things like fridges and so on it's great for that gets rid of all the finger marks from the kids or from me because i'm always raiding the fridge um, so i've just put in bright window cleaning it's come up with these i suppose they're all the advertised ones uk cleaning supplies so just basic, might as well have a look at the price. So five litres is £9.23p. I think that's about similar to what I'd get from Ukraine. And then obviously it's going to be your shipping costs on top of that as well. You, um, 
I'm not sure if they do it anymore, but I know I used to sometimes buy it as a 20 litre um, container, like a 25 litre barrel, but obviously 20 litres other stuff. But I don't think Ukraine get it in that anymore, whether that's their decision or Clover's, I don't know. So you could probably buy it bigger as well. Um, but that's ideal. It's small, fits in your van, the five litres, and you can top all these up and get your cloths and go. And like I said, streak free, and it is streak free. It's really good. And you might see some like streaks, like I said, just leave it, it'll disappear. Right in front of your eyes. Uh, don't know how much it'll be on Amazon, but I expect it'd be a lot more than that. <laughs> Can't find it. I'm sure I've seen it on there before anyway, and like most things on Amazon, it'll be a bit more than what you can get elsewhere, but then again, it's next day delivery, isn't it? And it might work out cheaper still that way than buying off a website with delivery. Right, I can't find it, um, but I expect you guys might. But yeah, that, that's the stuff you want. or well, stuff I use anyway. It's great stuff. You'll love it. No worries, mate. Bet you can't wait for it to come through the post now, but uh, hopefully it made your life a lot easier and be a big help. Um, worst case scenario, it is something your family will like your missus anyway it's really good i use it at home all the time it's really good and uh it's good stuff it makes my job cleaning insides a lot easier and my kids use it um they, my god my kids range from 17 up to the age of 27 i've got four of them so now nah, we all use it it's all good mate yes ched i've had better luck um with the kit i have had a problem though on my 45 litre trolley that stopped working on the start of the first job uh so but luckily because i carry gardener's backpacks we just switched that out my daughter could work using that while me and my son use the two-man system off the uh, tank so we still got the work done but then obviously it means when you get home you've now got to start faffing around with all that uh, but what, what, what it was was um the fuse was a bit loose so i brought a new fuse and then it still had the same problem again. It was working for a while and then stopped. But when we tightened the lid of the fuse up, it um, it kind of worked and sorted itself out. I haven't had any problems since. So what it did mean, uh, sorry, I'll just try and find something for you. Uh, so I've brought a spare fuse now for the holder. Sorry, uh, if I can try and find it. I right, got it. Yep, so I brought a spare one of these now to replace the one I've got in there. You'll see it's got the threads, so from the thread sticking outwards, that's what sticks out of the X-Line 45 litre trolley. Um, the bit there goes behind it. I'm not sure if you attach something on the bottom or it comes with the cable. So basically, I've just got to hook it back up, just disconnect the old one, put the new one in. That's what I'm planning on doing when it arrives. It'll hopefully arrive uh, this week, so I ordered it. I think it was like Thursday or Friday, so I guess it's got over the weekend to come back. Yes, mate, um, the fuse and the holders can grow because it does get wet. And the, the fuse that was in there was starting to rust in places anyway, so I put a new fuse and it worked. But we screwed the tap on, uh, top on, uh, and I've just bought a new holder just to make sure. And even if I don't need it and it's working, what we've done, I've still got one spare then. Uh, so that's all with kit, really, apart from that wrong button <laughs> yeah it's got um i think they were bullet connectors but i've changed them for another connector so it's easier i forgot what they're called now um so it's just easy for me to unconnect and then reconnect the new one in but i'm assuming the new holder comes with the wiring attached even though in the picture it doesn't look like it's got any wiring on the back of it at all so i'm sure the original one in there it looks like it, the wire soldered on the back of that so i'm assuming it comes with the wire anyway i hope so yeah, it's definitely good to have spares. That's what I do with a backpack. If I buy something to replace something in there, I'll buy two. So I've got one on the shelf. So as soon as it goes, I can quickly swap it in and out, get out working, and then just order a new bit to build up my spares, so to speak. But I'm not going to have spares of everything I use, but the common things that tend to go wrong. Luckily, the gardener's backpack is cheap enough uh, to get the spares. If I can find it. That's what I like about the gardener's backpack. It's simple. Things don't last forever on it, which you wouldn't expect for the price you're paying for it. Uh, backpack spares. So I can't find it. Oh, here they are. Yeah, so these are all the... Um, a long list here you can see of individual parts for your gardener's backpack. And the list goes on. And they're, they're cheap. I mean, they go from like 35p 
upwards and I think the most expensive part is the battery £23.50 and then you've got the pump which is £22 you can go to DA components is out of stock though the battery I've got a spare battery um, but you can get these these pumps £22.50 and I think for an extra 10 or more from DA components you can get a chemical one so that's what I like about the gardener's backpack and they're easy to get bits swap them in swap them out as well oh cheers Chad it is something I have thought of getting in is some soldering kit and um, see if there's anything when I need to repair it um, it could be worth investing in anyway um, my younger son he's, he's doing electrical stuff at school because he's going to try and be an electrician or get an apprentice uh, so in his sixth form he's going for it so hopefully he'll help me out <laughs> a lot of time it's been looking on YouTube and having a go but yeah I bear it in mind thanks Chad but yeah th these parts are good for um, cheapness anyway gardener's backpack obviously with me 40 line X line 45 litre trolley the parts are more expensive but as you'd expect they do last a lot longer it's just when something goes wrong in your kit and you haven't put it together it can take a lot of research and it's mainly getting the confidence to have a go sometimes you're forced in a corner just to do it anyway which is how I ended up um, changing the motors on my gutter vac but if I can do it you can do it um, now it's done I'm glad and like I say I could probably service the head unit myself now and if there's a problem with switches which I'm sure there's going to be I could buy a switch take it out put a new one in rewire it up so it's it's quite straightforward it's quite good anyway I hope you've all had a good month mine's not been too bad so far excuse me I'm on target to have a good month I just hope the weather holds out <laughs> now I've said it I've, I've jinxed it now and I but I know when I was looking at the weather this morning, it looks like this Tuesday and this Wednesday, the gusts are going to be fairly high. Um, but who knows, when we come to Tuesday, it might move later on in the week. And hopefully by the time we get to later on in the week, the gusts and that will happen over the weekend. But here's to hoping. And I'll have to make these decisions on the day, really. But it'd be great to just keep working. I just need to claw back, make some profit. But that profit is basically... It's not going to be straight in my bank building up the pot it's going to be clearing off some of the uh, debt on the credit card that i've had to use but i'll be happy if i get that done this month and next month and then i'm back to where i should have been and then back to building up the pot again isn't it now the better weather's coming i don't know about you lot but i uh, found january and february has been great cleaning apart from the weather we've definitely been finishing way earlier than we normally do and that's to the fact that the windows are obviously staying cleaner for longer because of all the rain you haven't got all these spiders there's no cobwebs going back out there the insects aren't out and about so you haven't got the problems with pollen the young birds aren't flying around so it's it's easier to clean but when summer starts getting here i'm sure that's going to reverse itself yeah uh, because all these things are going to change and then cleaning the windows is going to take longer it's going to be too hot probably a water ban on and a drought and people are going to be out in the garden, so people are going to be there to speak to you and it's going to take longer. But then you've got the longer day anyway, haven't you? But yeah, we're flying for it at the moment. It's to the point where you think, oh, I must be really good. I've got something right. But th that's all it's down to. The windows are just easier to clean this time of year, I find. Especially where I am anyway. It's bad, isn't it, with the spider mating season, um, September, October. But then November, December, they're still out. The spiders and cobwebs everywhere. But after December, they're not. They're not out and about, so it's so much easier. I don't know if you guys have found all this as well. But, um, yeah, it's been good. I hope you've all having a better month. Because I think we all suffered December and January. Uh, yeah, January, December and January, February. <laughs> Should be a good one. I hope next month is too. It's just the weather, in it? Surprising how weather-driven it is. Um so I know when you follow along with some of the other people who do like pressure washing, they've got seasons, haven't they? And then they tend to worry about when it's out of pressure washing season. But if you've got too much window cleaning going on, like I have, I can't really do pressure washing. I haven't got the kit for it anyway. But uh, I'm just relying on window cleaning, uh, facial softs and gutters, gutter clears, and then obviously conservative roofs, that sort of thing. That, that's basically as far as I go. Uh, but I'm, it's busy. It's good. It's nice. For everything to work right as well it's just when you get a spanner in the works it really hurts doesn't it hits you hard 
All right, guys, that's it. I'll, I'll call it a night there. Um, thanks for tuning in to watch anyway. And like I said, if you've got any questions, bung them in the comments below. After the live's finished, I'll always come back to you. Um, thanks for people for watching and following me as well. Sort of spurs you on. And I'll try and complete this video of how I changed my motors in the gutter vac. Uh, like I said, good, good thing I had was this the PDF file that was sent across to me by Spinner Clean kind of followed that as well. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. Have a good week as well, Chad. Hope everyone does. Cheers. Thank you. Take care.